guys. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, if you see me looking down, that's because my laptop's down here. Um, I figured I'd do this unboxing outside here. Got some really, really cool and exciting news to share with you guys. And I've kind of been talking about this. Um, real quick, again, thank you so much for joining, guys. Um, I'll get to the unboxing shortly. I just want to give maybe a few more minutes for more folks to come on. I kind of did this randomly. Uh, if there are any volume problems, please let me know if this sounds okay. I'm using my Rode mic up here. You guys can't see that. I think everything is okay. Um, <clears throat> it is a little windy outside today, though. I didn't expect this. So if a gust of wind comes by and blows everything over, well, yeah, that wouldn't be cool. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Uh, yes, yeah, smash the like button. Thank you. Thank you. My knowledge, I appreciate that. Uh, okay, sounds good. Thank you, guys. So yeah, I'll get to this very shortly, guys. I won't drag this out, but I just want to give a couple minutes uh, for everyone to get to come on here. Having gone live in a little while, and this whole thing just came about, this Evolve 50, these boxes you see here. <laughs> it's actually one unit, and we'll get to that. Um, as some of you know, uh, real quick, the reason why I'm doing this outside is because I didn't want to carry these things upstairs to my studio. My, we have, uh, we have a, a very modest home, but it is a two-story. Uh, my studio is upstairs where you guys normally see me and of course you'll see me out here it's something about the patio and acoustic just like fits together the only thing i'm missing is a beer but i'm not having any beers tonight uh, but anyway the subwoofer for here which we're going to open that first probably that thing it's not super heavy but it's just kind of awkward so i didn't want to carry that upstairs anyway that's why we are outside on the patio here so hopefully everything will go well um and i just like my live gear i kind of keep that you know stuff I play live with I keep that downstairs in another room anyway uh, just so it's easy to I play like two or three times a week sometimes four gigs a week man these acoustic shows on that note <clears throat> excuse me a little congested we've got a lot of pollen in the air here today but on that note you guys know this is mainly a metal guitar channel uh, that's never going to change you guys know that I just posted a video today actually I hope you guys hope you guys saw that it's um, it's some really cool uh, really cool lead lick that you can play in different keys. So if you didn't watch that yet, check that out after this live stream here. Um, the other thing, though, is I started playing these live acoustic solo shows about, um, I want to say about four years ago, three, maybe three years ago, something like that. And I didn't realize it would be what it's become today. Uh, it's become actually a big part of, uh, of our life, my wife and I. And playing as many shows, again, like three to four shows a week. This week I only had two shows, so it was a light week. But a couple weeks ago I had four, then three. So uh, on average two or three, I would say. But it's come a, a big, you know, big part of what I do as a musician. There's the metal side, you know, my own music and that sort of thing. And then there's this. There's the acoustic side where I'm mainly just playing cover songs. But I've written a lot of acoustic material as well. And that, that will be released down the road at some point. Um, <clears throat> but in any case... Mm -hmm. This has become just really a huge part of my music career and my music life. I didn't expect this to snowball in a good way. It's, it's done quite well. So um, let's jam a little bit more. I'm going to give just a few minutes for folks to get on, just maybe another minute or two here. But we're in the key of A minor, by the way. <clears throat> a really cool way to play this E minor. I'm sorry, A minor. We're in the key of A minor is the open A string. I'll show you this real quick, and some of you guys have seen this on prior videos. So open A, next string, next fret is going to be 7, then 5, then open, open. Okay, so same as A minor. But it just sounds kind of like dark and kind of wicked there. that pinky finger around anyway I wanted to share that with you real quick I use that quite a bit uh, just to break away from the traditional a minor uh, that's the cool thing about playing acoustic there's so much stuff you can do to make chords with more open strings so you get that full sound you know listen to these uh, the difference between these two sounds cool regular a minor but then we've got this then I might go to an F power chord 
sometimes I'll pull my first finger off of that last string, that E string. Listen to this. That paired with this. Just sounds really wicked kind of uh it's got that 80s like really dark 80s metal vibe to it there guys let's get to the unboxing we're gonna we're gonna break this thing open man um <clears throat> so real quick this is the this is the evolve 50m system uh what this is real quick guys it's a column speaker and i i put a disclaimer on here as i was setting up the live show this is actually sponsored um meaning this system showed up to me in the mail. I'll talk more about that um, after we unbox. I'm actually going to attempt to plug this thing in. I'm hoping we can get all this done in one live session here, but let's at least get the unboxing. So uh, the column system is basically a subwoofer and you've got a column speaker that stands up. What this is going to do for me, guys, is it's going to eliminate me having to use the two big speakers and speaker stands and floor monitor and all the power cables and cables that go with all that. Uh, that takes a while to set up and I'm certainly not complaining about that um, But when you do this night after night, it's like, oh, okay There's got to be an easier way and that's where these column systems come in one power cable and you just plug your stuff into it So anyway, let's uh, this is the column part. This came in two boxes uh, So I want to say a huge. Thank you to electro voice. Thank you guys so much uh, especially especially Eric who works there uh, he helped me, he helped this whole thing happen and, and just really pushed it through. So, uh, again, I'll, I'll share more about that at the end of the video um, or towards the end after we do the unboxing. So, let's first get this thing unboxed here. This is the, uh, do a little deadlift here for you guys so you guys can see that. This is thinking outside the box, right? <laughs> so, let's unbox this thing first. Sorry for the camera angle. I've only got one camera angle, but... I'll get this out in no time. We're on the cutting edge. Sorry, I'm full of puns tonight. Um, I'm just very honored, though, that you know I, I've had a I've had some smaller brand deals over the years, but this this is by far the biggest deal that I've had, guys. So I'm, I'm very I'm extremely humbled, extremely honored. Um, so we've got the power cable. Oh, that was just a styrofoam. <laughs> All right, we've got the power cable. Let's get that out. Put that right here off to the side. And sorry for the excess noise. We do have a manual here. You guys know we don't read manuals in this business, but I am going to hold on to this because sometimes I get hung up on things. All right. Styrofoam. Put this over here. Oh, here we, what's cool I've got to show you guys this as I'm gonna pull the camera up hopefully nothing falls <laughs> that would suck wouldn't it all right hopefully you guys are hanging in there with me and we are not jumping in the pool today by the way but you can see the handle right here I know it's in the plastic and I'm not gonna pull it up but that's the handles right here for this thing so this just makes it so much easier to uh, to carry around and, and load and unload and that sort of thing so let's see how easy this is to pull out Now it's tucked away with a styrofoam here, so. All right. I'm gonna throw the styrofoam over here. Make sure nothing else is in the box. All right. So the box felt a lot heavier. <laughs> Than, uh, than just this thing by itself. So this is a sub. I'm gonna pull. Um, I'm gonna pull the plastic off here. I'm gonna point this down, guys, so we can see this a little bit better here. I think this should just probably slide off. But let's see. This is a true unboxing. <laughs> I did not fake any of this. This is. Uh, I left it all packaged up for you guys. 
I like to give you guys the real deal here. All right. So we've got it out. And here it is. This is sub. Okay. Cool. And back here, and I don't know how well you guys can see this, but on the back back here, what's really cool about this unit, and I'm not doing a review yet, guys. I'm, I've got several videos coming up for this thing uh, because in talking to Eric at Electro Voice at EV, um, you know, I, I was giving him all these ideas that I had for videos because, you know, this channel is about content. It's about helping you guys. And there's just so many things I'm going to be covering. And plus, I play out, again, anywhere from two to four times a week. So, anyway, I wanted to show you a few things here. A lot of these types of systems, okay, including like the Bose system, they only come with, uh, with two inputs. And that was a problem for me. Uh, you had to buy an extra board to go with that. Now I have another soundboard, uh, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll still use that from time to time. But this system comes with all these inputs: one, two, three, four, five, six inputs here. So to me, that's just really cool. I mean, that's, you know, and they're all, uh, they're all for instrument quarter inch or XLR. Typically, why, why this is important for me? Because typically, I use at least three of them, right? I've got my microphone for vocals. I've got my guitar. And my wife, she sings a few songs to me here and there as well. So I've got an end for her mic as well. And I'm also actually considering, you guys know I, I throw some electric in. Sometimes I'll loop an acoustic rhythm and play electric on top of that. And, I, and I'm, right now I'm using the Pod Go Live for that, which is great. But I'm thinking about segregating the effects for acoustic and for electric. When I do that, or if I do that, of course I'll need a fourth input for that as well. So I've got all the inputs I would ever need. So that's a big thing. Um... And you've got all kind of stuff here. You know, you can you can daisy chain these together. Actually, I know I know a girl, uh, Mallory Moyer. She's got two of these systems, and she uses them together. Um, she'll use one for a solo act, but for her band, her band actually uses two of these things. And who knows? I may get her on the channel, uh, featuring how she uses this as well. But in any case, you've got effects on here and everything. So uh, this just there's a lot of stuff to go through. I'm not going to go through all this. We're just unboxing today. So let me turn this around. All right. And before I plug it in, we've now got to unbox this piece here. So I'm going to put the camera back up a little bit. Like that. Because I plan on plugging my acoustic in on this live session here. So guys, uh, just want to see if there's any questions in the comments. I know I won't be able to answer too much right now, but I, I'll be back once I get all this set up and we can definitely chat some. Let's get the power cable out here. And I'm gonna put the styrofoam in this big box because again, it's windy out here. So some of this stuff might blow in the pool big deal but hey all right let's so see I'm not gonna power this up quite yet guys um, I'm gonna I'm gonna unbox this thing first and I think we'll be <laughs> I think we'll be playing acoustic through this thing really really soon guys like I'd say within the next five seven minutes maybe something like that kind of dull. It's been around for a little while. All right, so I'm going to set this on the ground real quick. Sorry, you guys don't want to look at my head here, right? <laughs> but you get to look at it just for a little bit. Okay, so already an extremely cool thing. So this thing comes in a bag. Uh, this is helpful, you know, so already I know I've got some protection here uh, for the system. That's really awesome. This thing is super light, by the way. And this is the column speaker. We're about to break this open here. Yeah, this, this is really cool. 
I'm already thinking about how much time this is going to save me at my live shows, not having to set up what feels like for a whole band. Again, I'm just a solo act. My wife sings sometimes with me, and and uh, but man, this is just going to save me so much time at the gigs. I tell people, I joke with people, I don't get paid to play live music. That's the fun part. I get paid to set up and tear down, and then the drive time and everything that goes with it. Not complaining because it's a really, it's a really cool thing to do, you know. Hey, who doesn't want to make money playing music, right? I do this stuff for a living, guys. So, uh, by the way, I've got I've got a complete tutorial out there, um, complete tutorial out there on how to get started playing live solo gigs. If you guys haven't seen that, search for that on my channel after this video. Paul, what's up from Nottingham? Good job, says, can I bring my electric guitar? I am going to play the electric guitar through this thing. Probably not tonight, guys, to be honest with you. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug the acoustic in for a little bit, but I probably won't play the electric tonight. But that will be coming up, okay? I will have a video. And you guys know I bring the electric, too. Uh, I plan to play some metal through this thing. Let me... I want to show you guys this real quick. <clears throat> I want to show you how how this case is and hopefully you can see it they've got these protective some protective padding in here where the speakers butt up against one another so that I just think that's a genius idea um, it's the little things like that that go a long way you know when it comes to protecting your gear again playing out as much as I do man we're constantly you know setting up tearing down putting stuff in the car taking it out putting it in the room here so it's uh there's a lot involved you know so little things like the extra padding that this case provides that came with you know little things like that they to me they matter they matter big time so that's cool to see that it's cool to see when things are, are well thought out like that guys all right here we go so i believe this is the top portion Okay, yeah. So you can see that. That's that's the array speaker there. Okay. There's one more piece to this, though. Let me grab that. This is the piece, I believe, that goes in first. Okay. So this is just the pole, and I can see here that it doesn't matter which side goes into what. There's a little magnet here, though, and all this does, guys, I'll show you this real quick. It just fits down in the, that part right there, just like that. That's it. Really, really cool. And then after that, we've got this piece here that goes on top. Wow. So let me lift this up so you guys can see this thing. That's it right there, guys. That's the that's the column PA system. That's what I'll be playing through. And then you see the sub down there. So see how easy, guys, that was to set up. So now what I need to do is, well, I just need to plug everything in at this point. Okay. And guys, I have not read any instructions on this. I know that's not uh, the best method, but let's see if we can just figure this out. We've gotten this far. I'm gonna plug in. All right. I mean, I, I literally put that together in just a matter, probably less than a minute, maybe two minutes, right? All right, we're going to turn the power on. And it's on. 
And guys, what I'm going to do, let's see, I think this comes, I think everything just comes on automatically here. I don't think there's any additional wires. In other words, I've got the speaker set up. Uh, I've got it plugged in here. Hold on one second. I'm going to turn some lighting on so it's not so dark. There we go. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference with my light on or not, but let's see. Gospel Mark, what's up, man? Craig's here. Awesome. Tina, Tina's on too. Awesome. Hello, Tina. Tina's our good I, I shouldn't say friend. She's really... Tina's really family, you know. We, my wife has uh, known her for a very long time, and we've hung out quite a bit over the years. All right, guys. So the next step is just to plug in, man. Um, uh, Craig, you, Craig is asking why do you need a subwoofer when you're not playing bass or drums? Um, the subwoofer really just gives you some more bottom end uh, with the acoustic and all that. And I've actually played through one of these before, and I'll tell you that story once we get plugged in here. So, man, I'm nervous to do this. I don't know why. I shouldn't be nervous at all. <laughs> and I don't know if there's any setup that I need to do for this or, or whatever. I'm going to turn my guitar volume all the way down. You've got a master volume on this thing, which I have it at 0 dB. And then you've got individual volumes for each input. I'm not going to crank this thing because it'll, it'll distort. Can you guys hear that okay? Hmm? My wife's saying it sounds good and she's in the living room there. You can kind of hear um, the bottom end in that. Let me move move us a little bit closer here. Um, I'm impressed, guys. I'm not I'm not going to go through all the effects. I'll have to mess around because they've got reverb and delay in this thing and all that good stuff. I, I literally just plugged in. I just plugged my guitar in. Let's see if it's coming out. Yep. So I hear the sub. I hear it coming out of this. Again, I'm not cranking this thing up. I've got my guitar. I've got it at zero dB. Um, I believe this is, a, I want to say 1,000 watts. I could be wrong on that. I believe it is 1,000 watts. What these array systems do, these portable column speaker systems do, uh, from my understanding anyway, is they spread the sound wide. When you have, uh, like, traditional PA speakers, the sound is projected outward, right? And you've got a little spread there, sure. I, I usually play with two. Actually, I've, I've been using Electro Voice for, <laughs> for like three or four years now, uh, before Electro Voice knew who I was. I went with my uh, Sweetwater Rep's recommendation when I first started going uh, solo like this. And Ben Porter, my rep at Sweetwater, really cool dude, L love that guy. He's always pointed me in the right direction. And uh, he's like, well, get, get these as speakers for what you're doing. Told him what, you know, what I wanted and everything. So, um, so I was like, okay, well, I got the EB speakers. Actually, I only started out with one. I've got, I think they're called the Z, ZBX or ZLX, something like that. Um, but anyway, they're 12 inch or 1000 watts uh, powered speakers. I started out with one. I eventually got two because, you know, two sounds better than one. <laughs> Actually, one, one of those speakers do just fine for most gigs, to be honest with you. Uh, then later, I got their floor monitor. I got the EV floor monitor. So that's a 750 watt floor monitor. The beauty of these speakers, um, are these column systems here. I'm replacing all of that with this thing now. Uh, the beauty is you don't really need a monitor with these things. If you guys saw me playing at the State Fair, I've got a video out here. Um, I got a video out here that uh, I think I put that out about two months ago, maybe a little less than that, where I played at the Florida State Fair. <laughs> They had the EV, I think it was an older model, an original, uh, one of the, maybe not original, but an older model of the EV Evolve system. Uh, I plugged in through that, and I'm like, this thing is cool. I played an entire show. I played, uh, I was there for six hours. I played hour on, you know, hour off. That's kind of how they do things at fairs and theme parks and such. But uh, I played, you know, three full hour sets with that, and I'm, I was just blown away. I'm like, I don't need a monitor. This thing sounds great. 
I even recorded it just on my phone as if you were out in the audience. So you guys can catch that video on my channel. And, um, and I guess we'll get to this part, how this came about, because I just got this in the mail, like literally today, just a <laughs> couple hours ago. Um, I, I was so happy with that system. I've been kind of like going back and forth, like I wanted a column system, but what do I want? Like, like what, what am I going to get? You know, uh, there's a lot of brands out there and that sort of thing. But uh, playing through this, I'm like, okay, it was a no brainer. I'm like, let me reach out to Electro Voice because I've got a, quite a bit of content now. I'm playing live solo gigs on tips and that sort of thing. And I just went over some things that, you know, that I could offer, some videos that I could do, some ideas that I had that would promote this their, their brand and the system. Because, again, I've been using Electro Voice already for like, you know, three or four years now. Uh, so it, it all led to this, in short. So I'm, I'm very, Electro Voice, especially Eric and everyone involved, I'm, I'm so grateful for you guys uh, for sending me this this is going to change so much <laughs> and it's just going to save me so much time and extra you know just the hassle of just having to lug a bunch of gear around now i've got like just this so i'm very grateful for that guys and i wanted to say this while we're talking we're not ending quite yet we got some more riffs to play and of course i want to answer some of your questions and chat with you guys a bit um when you're going for something whether it's a job promotion or a job whether uh, maybe you're trying to get a brand deal or something like that. Maybe you have a YouTube channel, right? And, and, you've, and it's thriving and that sort of thing. Always go into something where you're giving an extreme amount of value. The, the value you can give, the, what you're going to do, and how that's going to benefit the other party, that's always going to be the best way to go about things, guys. You know, So start with that. Never have the attitude of, well, what's in it for me? Let me see what I can get, right? Don't don't go with that attitude, guys. I'm I'm telling you this, you know, just from experience over the years. Always give the value. If you give value, just like I do my best to do on this channel, and it, and it's growing. There are a lot of great things that happen because I, I do my best to give you guys value. I think of that first. How can I help you guys? How can I help everybody watching this? So, go with what you can give, the benefits you can present to someone, and guys, everything else will really it literally will fall into place for you. Okay. So let's jam on this a little bit. Man, I feel the bottom end just sitting here. And I'm not talking about my bottom end, I'm talking about, you know, the speaker here, but I just, it's so nice, you know? And again, guys, no effects. This is a dry acoustic, right? The cool Metallica chord. sanitarium that I was just playing but that was like my extreme favorite song from Metallica back when I started listening to them this is back in 88 89 when I bought Justice and Puppets and I was just mesmerized and that it was just so haunting just that you know very cool but for those of you who don't know that open E two four open okay and just move it up that's it. Keep that same configuration you've got. How's it? There we go. And I forgot how to play it already. But anyway, Metallica uses that, uh, you know, those, those A and D strings, two and four. I forgot how to play all this stuff because I don't learn other people's songs anymore unless I'm playing covers. And even then, when I learn a cover song, I don't play it like they do. I transpose it, right? Boston's peace of mind. Help those stuff like that in, you know? Anyway, 
I'll just throw a little stuff in. I'll transpose it to a key that I'm comfortable singing in, and, and I'll throw some little stuff in like that. So uh, that's one of the things I encourage you guys on my videos, lessons and all. Always try to make it your own. Or don't try, do. Make it your own. You know, add your own flavor to it, even if you're playing cover, especially if you're playing cover songs. Um, you know, I've never been big on, like, well, I've got to play every note just like the way they did it. And some cover bands do that. Like, if you're, I know a guy in a Pink Floyd cover band, they're expected to play exactly like the album, right? But for everything else, I really like to hear other people, other artists out there doing what I do, play their own version of it. You know, I've heard the real version of it time after time, right? And that was not a Cindy Lauper pun, although it could have been. Uh, I've heard, you know, the real version of it. I want to hear your version of it. If I, were, if I were going to see you live, all of you, I'd want to hear, like, what can you do to that song to make it different, to kind of make it your own? Just like I say about my lessons, even my courses out there, uh, Metal Riff Master. Yeah, I want you to learn those riffs, but I want you to expand further than that. You may come up with something cooler than the actual riff that I'm sharing with you, and that's what I want. So, in any case, guys, um, yeah, this came in the mail today. <laughs> I was so ecstatic. Uh, I, I can't... I can't be happier, guys. This is so cool. Uh, it's just it's changing everything for my live shows. So, guys, while we're while we're hanging out here, um, any questions? I'm gonna scroll back up to see if I missed anything. Um, Transparent says wireless. What brand is that? Um, no, it's not the Line Six, but uh, the wireless unit I'm using is the Boss WL20L, and I actually have a video on that on this channel here, and you can see it plugs kind of an eyesore back there. But I, some people complain about it sticking out like that. Um, but I've never had any issues with it, guys, because I'm, I'm standing playing all the time, and even sitting like this, just it just works, you know. Um, but at my shows, I stand and play. I don't sit. I, I sat a few times in the beginning. I just didn't like it. I like standing up. I feel like that gives uh, I don't know gives you more of a of a strong presence, and I don't know. That's just my preference. But yeah, Boss WL20L. This works with my acoustic. Works with my electrics. A lot of times, and you guys see my videos where I switch guitars in the middle of the song, I'll loop, I use a, the Ditto X4 Looper by TC Electronics, I'll loop a rhythm on acoustic, then I'll switch guitars by switching the wireless out, and I'm playing through my Pod Go, and I'll just switch the patch in the Pod Go to an electric patch and start playing lead. So this thing is, man, I almost want to get another one just as a backup because I, I use it all the time. Um, this does, my wife's candy there says, this does sound great with a Takamini. Man. See, I may not even use the Podgo for acoustic anymore after this, because I like the way this sounds. We've got some effects down here that I can, uh, you know, that I can couple with that. Sounds really good, though. Um, Craig, you asked me, am I still using my mic mechanic pedal? Uh, you know, I am. <clears throat> I am using the mic mechanic pedal. Uh, the mic mechanic, and I've got a video on that. Actually, that's been my, that's been one of my top videos now. I mean, this is a metal guitar channel primarily, right? But my mic mechanic pedal is a vocal pedal uh, by TC Helicon. That's gotten a lot of uh, attention. But it's a great vocal pedal. And what it acts, this is basically a compressor. Uh, there, there's like a tone button that it has it just makes everything sound really good uh, you've got some reverb delay it has pitch correction you guys know I'm not a big fan of, of things like auto-tune and pitch correction so I just I turn that all the way off uh, and I'm not saying I'm the perfect singer I'm not I make mistakes uh, but I would just I would rather know when I'm making mis uh, a mistake than have the pitch correction on right so Anyway, I film a lot of my stuff, and I'll go back and watch it. I'm like, okay, I screwed up there. Now I know what to work on. That, screwed up that. Okay, let me work on that part. So that's just how I see things. And, I, you know, nothing wrong with using pitch correction if you guys want to do that. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I just personally, I just don't care for it. So um, I want to give you the truest version of what I can do, the truest version that I possibly can, which is why this unboxing was so authentic. And it was so quick, man. I, like... I mean, we've been hanging out for about 30 minutes, but from the time I started unboxing this stuff, and of course I'm chatting and moving the camera, showing you different things. I mean, we had this thing up in no time, guys. So, hey, thanks for your help. Thanks for helping me set this thing up. <laughs> um, Paul says 3D, 3D sound. Yeah, this thing does have a 3D sound. Um, 
Craig says you should start using backing tracks, good ones from good. I, dude, I'm, for me, not for everybody else, for me, I am absolutely anti backing track because then it just sounds like karaoke. And people aren't paying me to go perform with karaoke tracks, they're paying to hear an acoustic set. You know what I mean? So I look at it that way. I'm not, I don't put that on anyone else, guys. I've heard other people, a few other people play with backing tracks. Uh, I, I'm just personally not a fan of it. I, it's, I, it's a turnoff for me. Now, the caveat to that is, let's say you're a solo guitarist, because I have used my own backing tracks before. Um, I played my own music in a couple of gigs a few years ago. So what I did was I went into the studio, in my studio, where I recorded those tracks. I muted the vocals and the lead guitar parts so that when I played along, the vocals were just me and my leads were live. So I still really wasn't a big fan of, of doing that. It's just so much better with a full band. But uh, for my for my acoustic shows, I absolutely refuse backing tracks. I won't do it. I just don't. Again, I don't want to put that on you guys. That's, you know, um, so I just don't really I just don't really care for that. Um, but I, Craig, I understand what you're saying. I didn't, again, I've done that. I, you know, I, I just dumped down the the drums and the bass and one rhythm track and I played along with that um, and I've done that for some shows when I'm playing my own music because you guys know I, I play metal I write metal that's all my albums are metal it'd be impossible for me to pull that off on just one acoustic guitar um, so for things like that yeah that's fine but for doing these these live acoustic shows where I'm playing cover songs and that sort of thing I won't use backing tracks um, you know uh, Sean, what do I do for a living? I do this, man. I, I'm a full-time musician. I left my corporate job. I had a really good corporate job, guys. I, uh, I talked about it. I, how many, I don't know how many saw the podcast. I was, on, I was on the Drinking with Drew show last night on his channel. Uh, his YouTube channel was called uh, The Drinking with Drew Show. He's a good friend of mine. I met him through a mutual friend that I worked with at, at the company I worked for for almost 14 years. And, um, you know, we're, we're talking a bit about that, uh, talking about, you know, when I left my job, just, I, I just didn't want to do it anymore, guys. I, I, I've always wanted to be a full-time musician. I'm 47 now, so if I do the math right, I was 44 when I left my gig, my, my day job. Um, I didn't want to be 80, 90 years old, looking back on life, thinking, what would have happened if I had taken that chance, right? I didn't want to have that regret, so now I don't have to have that regret. I, I made the leap, but yeah, I am a... Uh, I am a full-time musician, man. I, I, I make a, most of my living off of my guitar courses. Off of, If you go to metalmastermind.com, most of you guys have my course uh, or one of my courses. So that, my music, of course, is out there. My albums make a little bit of revenue. YouTube, YouTube has not only allowed me to make a little bit of revenue from, from the ads, but you know, a tremendous amount of opportunities like this would have never come about had it not been for my YouTube channel because I was able to show Electro Voice that, hey, I've got some content out there on this topic. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you something, when I talked to Eric at Electro Voice, you know, he was saying a lot of DJs use these type of systems. He's like, but we really want more like acoustic artists and, and, and small acts, you know, solos and duos and that sort of thing, showcasing this stuff. So uh, I think that's why they were so quick to jump on what I'm doing here. So I, I really uh, will do my best to give the absolute best representation of this product because I'm just plugged into it now, and <laughs> I love it, you know. A little bit of puppets. But I'm, and, I, and I've played through one before, too. Again, I played that entire show at the fair. But, uh, no, your question, though, Sean, I'm, I'm a full-time musician, man. That and, of course, the acoustic gigs. One thing I'll tell you guys, when you take, if you, if you take the leap and go out on your own, what I encourage you to do is don't count on just one income source. Do the one thing, right? but learn to diversify your revenue sources from that thing that you're doing. Like, for example, I'm a musician, right? So the old school mindset of being a full-time musician would be, well, you gotta go join a band, start a band, and get signed by a label. And that was like the only way you could make it. And actually it's not. You know, with the internet, there's so many other opportunities. You know, I have, uh, and it's not like I'm a gazillionaire. I'm not, not anywhere near whatever a gazillion is, right? But I diversified the streams of income. I didn't just rely on my music. If I were, if I just relied on my four albums and the fifth album I'm working on right now, which I hope to have done soon, I promise I'm working on that. There's another, well, I don't want to say too much about what's coming up, but anyway, I'll share that later. But 
uh, if I just relied on the income from my albums, what I make off Spotify and iTunes, I'd be broke, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'd be very broke. So I still, I'm still a full-time musician, but I diversified those income sectors. I got on YouTube, you know, I've been on YouTube since 2010, it's been a long road. Uh, guitar courses, right? You can have a Patreon, I have a Patreon, you know, you can, you can have a website. I even blog, guys, even my website, jasonstallworth.com, uh, and I blog for metalmastermind.com for our course site. You know, you can, you can blog, you can write articles, and, and you can get revenue off of that. You know, YouTube, again, YouTube. Uh, there are so many things you could do. I, I wrote a book, I published a book called Heavy Metal and Weights back in 2017. So there's another small revenue stream, you know. Uh, then I play out, I play live solo gigs. So I'm not boasting. I only say that to tell you guys that if you're taking the jump into something, you know, go all in on that one thing, whether it be music, whether it be opening a restaurant or opening a gym or whatever you're doing, but make sure you've got a few different streams of revenue that you're building within that one thing. I don't, I don't recommend focusing on more than one thing because as a friend told me, an old colleague told me one time, if you try to chase two rabbits, you won't catch any. And I've used that analogy a bit over the years because I was trying to chase many at one time in, in my life and I was just running in circles, you know. So I hope that bit of advice helps you helps you guys. That's you know that's what it's all about. Um, Bag of donuts, what's up? So as a solo act, how does the sound man work when you need to make sound adjustments? House, wife, or on your own? Dude, it's all me. It's all on my own. Um, what I usually do is, and I, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it with this. I usually don't have to make adjustments other than turning the volume down, you know, up or down a little. But normally, uh, I have the traditional PA. And I'll have my soundboard, and it's just right over here behind me, right? So I can make little adjustments. Now, I'm a big fan of, I, I like to set it and forget it. So if I know, as long as my guitar and vocals are, are mixed well, and I know what that level is, and that's going to be the same at every single gig, then all I ever have to worry about is the overall volume. So I've got, I've got that part down to a science. Now, I'll have to play around with this a little bit, of course, and, and get the vocals uh, and guitar mixed well and what I may do is I may have like my good friend Brian Ray Brian I don't know if you're on uh, on this live stream but he he also plays out too and he's really he's really got an ear for sound for live sound so I may have him come to one of the gigs when he's not gigging and just help get that balanced out while he hears me singing and playing help get that balanced out so uh, but again with the solo act guys the sound the sound portion of it it's not that big of a deal it's really not uh, now, in some cases, I may use my soundboard and, and just run that through a channel. I might still do that, um, and I won't be able to use this every single show. There are a couple of venues that I play at where I plug directly into their system, right? Uh, so I'm going to hang on to my Electro Voice monitor. I'll probably hang on to all my other speakers because who knows if I start doing the band thing later or whatever, um, you know, I'd be using that for that. Use this for solo act, but. Some shows, there's probably about two, maybe three venues that I play at that I plug directly into their sound system. So I just run, uh, run my Mackie. I've got a small Mackie board. I think it's a Pro FX 10V, something like that. I always get those names mixed up. Uh, but I plug that into their sound system, and I have my vocal effects and guitar effects and all that. So I could probably even bring this and just because you've got a soundboard on the back of this thing. Um, and just plug that directly into the system. I'm not really sure, you know. Um, but in any case, you're your own sound man when you're doing um, when you're doing that. Craig, I don't know what I E M means, man. I'm, I'm not very good with acronyms, so let me know what I E M means. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Sean, thank you for getting my courses, by the way. I appreciate that. Guys, roll in the questions if you have them. We'll hang out here for a little bit longer. Um, I'm just scrolling back to see if I missed anything here. ADD hobbyists, you were on, or hopefully, hopefully you're still on, but you mentioned local open mic uses the 30. Okay, yeah, there's another version of this, EV30. I was more interested in the 50 because there are some pretty big stages that I play on, uh, specifically the two wineries that I play at, Kill and Curly Winery in Plant City here. I play at another winery called Fiorelli Winery. That's in Bradenton, uh, and they both have pretty big stages, uh, Kill and Curly especially because it's a huge winery. So I've seen other folks play, you know, other artists play there 
uh, as I do with just one of these systems, and it sounds great. But I wanted to get the 50, not the 30. I wanted to get the, you know, the top model uh, because I want to make sure I've got coverage, which I, I don't see this being a problem. And actually, my first, my first video, my first like YouTube video on this product here, is probably going to be at Kill and Curly, which I'll be at next Friday uh, after this coming weekend. So I plan to do a full video on the features and everything, you know, my first time using it as a gig. I may use it this Friday as well. I've, I've, got, a, I've got a debut at a place called Tampa Joe's uh, on the west side of town. So I may actually use this if I can play around with it enough and be comfortable. Uh, but again, it's pretty simple. I mean, I plugged in, I'm ready to go. It's pretty cool. So, see any other questions I missed here, guys. Uh, tragic. Okay, here we go. Uh, Craig, you mentioned in-ear monitor. Yeah, that. I mean, that would. I've thought of getting some in-ear monitors. Um, I actually had a, another company reach out to me about trying theirs, so I, I need to get back to them. But um, with this thing, though, this I don't need a monitor. Um, I've stood behind like one of my buddies that plays out. His name is RDZ. Uh, he, he was playing at Jerry's Dockside, and I was going on right after him. And I stood behind the stage, and I'm like, I'm thinking, I can hear you clearly, and the speaker's facing that way, and I'm behind the stage. And then when I played the EV, uh, the older version of the EV at the fairgrounds, uh, I did not need a monitor at all. I'm like, this is, I can hear myself perfectly clear, and even even standing behind this thing. And now I imagine with this thing, I'll be able to hear myself even more clear, because it's, it's the, the newer and bigger model of it. So... Um, I, I think the only time I'd really need in-ear monitors is if I'm playing with a band. Then I need my own monitor or, or in-ears would obviously be, you know, a, a better option for that. Uh, Tragic asks, when I first started playing live shows, what was your set list like and how many songs did you know? Um, that's a really good question. So for starters, and I, and I talk about this in my complete guide to getting started playing live solo gigs. I've got a video on that, uh, tragic if you haven't seen that yet on my channel. But, uh, but I had decided, for one, that I was only going to play a very, you know, condensed era and genre. Um, you guys know I'm a metalhead, so I love metal. That's what I'm doing when I'm playing electric. But for acoustic and in playing cover songs, I'm like, I only want to play 80s, you know. And maybe a side, I say 80s with a side of 70s, right? I just don't like a lot of, I don't listen to a lot of other stuff, and I don't really want to go into learning what people, what everybody wants to hear. Like, around here you've got a lot of southern rock and a lot of country, nothing wrong with that, that's great. I'm glad people listen to it, I'm glad people play it, but it's just not my thing. And I was just kind of dead set against learning songs that I didn't really care for, you know, because then it would just turn into a job. And this still does not feel like a job to me. I want it to stay that way. You know, um, so to answer your question, I stick to the 80s because I know a lot of 80s songs. So, you know, learning them and I, or just learning the chord progression and then transposing that into a key that I can, I'm comfortable with. Because uh, some of those 80s folks get way up there and I don't have the range for that. But um, that was pretty simple. Now, I do have an iPad um, and I have, a, I have a video on set list, what I use for my set list. Uh, but I've got a little iPad up there that I keep on stage because... I know the progressions, that's not a problem, but sometimes I forget the lyrics, and, and all I usually need is just like, okay, I just need to see that first word in that line, okay, got it. Uh, so I have that kind of as my, my uh, security blankie <laughs> on stage, you know, because I don't, I don't, I mean, yeah, you can, you can pull it off and make something up, and I've done that before, make it fun, that's, that's cool, but it, it allows me to focus more on the performance. If I had to look down and just see the, the first, how the second verse starts, you know that first word okay got it and I can get my head back into performing rather than having to you know look down so I, I've got the iPad actually I I went through a four-hour show last weekend without the iPad I mean, that was my first time playing without the iPad and it was simply because I forgot it I left it at home we got to the show I'm sorry this is a five-hour gig right babe that was a five-hour gig yeah um, which is crazy. This is at Finn's Dockside. It was on a friend. They started doing five hour shows uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday nights. So I'm like, oh dear God, this is going to be tough. Five hours, man. You take breaks, of course. But I made it through just fine. You know, I, I did have my phone up there, which I could barely read that. So, um, you know, but yeah, I, I, my set list were just, re it's really songs that I like. You know, I love Brian Adams and Don Henley and Richard Marks and 
Hart. Uh, I play some of the, the Cutting Crew, um, The Outfield, Eddie Money. I play a lot of Eddie Money songs. I played the Till Tuesday, Voices Carry, In Excess, uh, Toto, a, a lot of stuff, you know. So I just stuck with songs that I already kind of like knew because I'm an 80s kid. This is what I listened to uh, throughout my life. So it was much easier. I already kind of had it in me. So it's much easier to go that route. So if you're playing, if you're wanting to play live solo shows and you're playing for money, you're going to play at these you know, wineries or breweries or restaurants or bars or wherever events, um, you know, you can take the path of just sticking with what you, you're comfortable with and what you like, going that, you know, kind of condensed genre or era or whatever, right? Because I, I play 80s, I don't just play rock, I play some pop songs too. Hey, I play Taylor Dane's Tell It To My Heart. I break that out, people are like, what? I've never heard anybody play that before, you know? Um, my buddy Brian, he plays, and I can't remember the name of the song, he plays something, so he plays, I think it's a Whitney song, I can't remember, but anyway, we'll, you know, I go off and play some of that stuff too, so it's kind of like rock and some pop all thrown in. I play a New Shoes song, I can't wait. Um, but you can also go the route, though, that many people go. I say most people go the route of playing, um, playing the hits. You know, like my neighbor Bob next door. Um, I'll have to get him on the channel here at some point. He goes by Tourist Bob, and he's he's really good at what he does. He he plays all over the map. You know, so he just plays. Uh, he sticks with the hits. You know, and it could be, it could be from 40 years ago. It can be today. So, a lot of people do that, and that works really well. Uh, I just chose a little bit different path. So, um, but he enjoys playing that too, though. That's the that's the important part there. You you had to have the desire to do that. Um, all right. Uh, Sean, have you thought of doing a seven string course? I have. I I have, Sean. I think that I'm working on a lead guitar course. I can't say I'm working on it because I haven't started it yet. But I'm 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 thinking uh, the layout of it. And I'll be coming to you guys for some input on that as I build out the course. Um, one thing I've learned over the years, you know, I talked about providing value. I want to make sure that I provide you guys what you want and what you need, not just what I think you want and need, right? So as I as I go through the flow of the course, I'll be sharing some of the uh, some of the layout of the course with you guys as we as we move along. So look for that over the next couple of months. I mean, I'm sure I'll have the course ready by the summer, um, and I, I have thought of doing the seven-string course. If there's enough demand for it, I'll do it. I Making a course is, is it's tough, guys, to be honest with you. It's, there's a lot of effort involved, um, and I, I put my heart and soul into making these courses. So I, you know, I want to make sure there's enough demand for a seven-string course before I go through all that time and effort to, to make it. Um, and I, I read your last comment, no one has made a seven string course worth, worth anything. I, and I get that. The one thing that I am against, at least for me, when it comes to seven string, is I'm just, don't get a seven string just to chug, 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 chug on the low notes, because that just gets boring and you don't need a course for that. I mean, that's, you know, I'm going to be taking you guys just like Metal Riff Master. I'm going to take you guys through different keys. I'm going to take you guys through, you know, a lot of different things, man, on the, in that course, right? So, so I'll be I'll be making a very expansive course on that. Uh, Bob says, got any experience with the high-end Ibanez RG models? So, Bob, I actually have, um, and I don't know if it's high-end, right? Uh, but it's an Ibanez Prestige RG 1570, um, and it's I've been playing that guitar the most lately, and I got it from a good friend of mine. I think it was like about a thousand dollars back in its back in its day uh, this is a 2001 model so you know it's uh, I, I love the guitar I don't think you need like a super super high end I mean if we're talking two and three thousand dollar guitars I don't know if you need that but you uh, Voff you can look on my channel look look up on my channel Ibanez just look at Ibanez you'll see a few videos with my Ibanez um, I've got a complete rundown of the RG1570, the Prestige. I also got where I, I actually changed the pickups out. It's got the V7, V8 pickups, the stock Ibanez pickups. I changed them out, but then I immediately changed them right back. And I just, and I don't know, I started playing it through the EVH amp, and I just, I, I fell in love with those pickups, the V8 and V7. So they're back in there, and, and it's funny, sometimes things grow on you over time. It's kind of weird how that happens. 
Um, Transparent says, don't know if it's considered high-end, but Japanese, 5.5, five, yeah. I think a lot of guitars made in Japan are considered high-end, or th th there's some prestige behind the guitars made in Japan. They just... I don't know that I've played a bad guitar from Japan. They just, the, I don't know, the the quality assurance, I guess you could say, is just uh, at a little bit higher level, e even in the U.S. I mean, I've got my ESP. You guys know I've got my ESP E2 Horizon FR7. That was made in the ESP uh, factory in Japan, I believe. So, and that, that's a, dude, that guitar plays just like butter. It's just so smooth. It even sounds good finger picking, guys. Pretty cool. So guys, um, any other questions out there? I know we're talking about Ibanez's now. Um, Chris asked about what my experience is with the bows. So I do have a little experience with the bows. Uh, I've got a video on this on my channel too. Um, I think it was earlier this year or last year. I can't remember. I think it was earlier this year. I went out to Sarasota. I live in the Tampa area. I went out to Sarasota and I just jammed uh, with with a friend of mine, uh, Andres Colin. He's a Spanish guitarist. I've got a video on my channel. Spanish guitarist plays with metal guitarist or something like that. You can you can see it on my channel, and we actually played through his bows. I, I came out there with him and I played through his bows L1 system. So I played through that, um, and two other friends of mine that play out on a regular basis have them. So I I, I played through one uh, one at an open mic one time played through that one. I didn't play through RDZ's bows, but I heard it, and it sounded wonderful. It sounded really good. So, um, I can't say which one I like best, because again, I haven't I haven't played through those. Hey, there's Mama Cat behind me. Hey, Mom. Um, I haven't I haven't really played extensively through a lot of the systems, but, you know, I, I didn't dislike them or anything like that. It wasn't, you know, it's really hard to tell unless you're out there in the audience, but um, I do know the experience I had with uh, with the electro voice playing at the fairgrounds because I played you know three full sets for that I was pretty blown away which is why I reached out to the company um, I was just blown away by it I'm like this thing it because it just everything felt good and sounded good uh, I got a video out there look up look up my video playing I played at the state fair I can't remember the actual title but uh, it's something about the state fair Florida State Fair so look that up and check that out and you'll hear you'll hear an older version of this and we we're just filming that with with the iPhone, um, and I've got my iPhone filming this right now. You know, I'm using the Rode NTG video mic because it picks up voice a little bit better and kind of blocks out the other the wind noise. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear the wind out here, uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm loving this man. So I can't wait to play a show with it. I I'm probably gonna mess around some more with this uh, tonight or tomorrow, and uh, I've got a gig again. I've got a debut at Tampa Joe's this Friday. I may bring it out to that as well because I plan on, this is going to be my main piece of gear right here. I'm not lugging around the big speakers, the speaker stands, the monitor, all the power cables, one, two, three power cables. There's three outlets I need. Uh, you know, I've got the power strips and all that. And then I've got, I've got to have cables running to each one of those. So it's like, okay, this is solving all of that. This is like condensing all of that work into just a very simple setup. So my 30 minute setup, I usually I can be set up in about 20 minutes because you still have the mic stands and you still have my guitar effects, my vocal effects, but I, I may even just use the vocal effects in here, you know. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be learning more about the system. I do need to read uh, the manual just so I can go through and see how to work the effects and all that stuff. So I'm really excited about that. Um, my Logified is talking about the wizard neck on the on the Ibanez. I love the wizard necks. I love them. See, I, I, I love ESP guitars, and I love Ibanez, the RG with the wizard necks. Um, man, if I had a guitar like that just kind of like in between both of those, 
<laughs> it would be perfect, you know. Uh, but yeah, this is a Takamini, guys. This is a Takamini G series. It's an EG five two three SE. It's a beautiful guitar. I I put the uh, Dianario locking tuners on it, and I've got a actually I've got a video on this, a recent video on this Takamini Takamini versus my Martin. I just bought a Martin guitar. Uh, a, what was it, about eight or nine months ago? But I've had some little issues with it. My Martin guitar, when I'm when I'm playing outdoors, I've got a few outdoor gigs, and it gets hot here in Florida, and I've noticed the neck warps just a little towards the end of those gigs, and I get a little fret buzz. You know, this Takamini, I never get, never have any trouble with it. The only trouble I had with the Takamini is my electronics went out in the middle of two shows, two different times. Um, since I took it to the guitar shop, Replay Guitar Exchange, and they, of course, when they plugged it in, it worked fine, <laughs> you know, because that's what happens. Um, but in any case, they, he's like, nothing was wrong with it, but they did go through the process of cleaning everything out and just, you know, making sure there were no loose ends or whatever. So I think it's fine. Man, that's a big gust of wind. I'm hoping it doesn't blow down my light, so if I need to get up, I don't know why it's so windy. It just uh, all of a sudden just came upon me. All right. Yeah, I mean, so as far as thinner necks, though, um, which is, I like this Takamini, this Takamini guitar here. You see the neck. It's more in line. It's kind of like a mix between my, my ESP guitar and my Ibanez. It's not, you know... It's not, I don't like thick necks. I don't like the baseball bat feel. So this is perfect. And I actually like playing this guitar better than my Martin. I, I shared that on my Martin versus Takamini video I put out, I think a couple of weeks ago. Uh, man, those notes are so pronounced. very happy with the system guys <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that as well as I can uh, guys any other questions I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up soon I'll I'll hang out for just a, a, another minute or two if we've got more questions coming in I'll hang out longer I'll hang out as long as you guys want I mean at some point I'll have to go to bed but uh, but uh, drop any questions you guys have real quick smash the like button if you guys don't mind uh, that helps the channel and I do appreciate that and uh, Leave me, if anybody has any questions, hey, start typing it up. And we can chat more. If not, we'll, um, we'll end it here soon. But I want to give another big thank you to the folks at Electro Voice, guys. Thank you so much for this thing. This thing is just, uh, I, I mean, you guys saw how quickly I just popped this thing together, plugged it in, boom, we're on. I mean, that was just, that was just crazy, right? Uh, I'm still blown away by the simplicity. Because again, I'm used to setting up a speaker stand, setting up this speaker stand, putting the speaker on top, powering it up, running a cable to the board times two, then having to do my monitor. Same thing with that, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're when you're having to go to different parts of the stage and, and get the cables out, it just uh, you know, and then setting this up, yeah, transparent, five minutes, and it took me five minutes because I was talking in between and trying to show you guys things. I. I could whip this thing out, pop it together in less than a minute, and turn power on. Boom! We're we're <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's it's crazy um, how far technology has come. And this thing sounds again. I've I've played through the older version, and that sounded phenomenal. Now I've got this version. I can only I can't wait to get this on the stage this weekend, and especially especially next Friday. And I'll have videos coming out. I have a lot of videos on this on how to use it for different applications because um, I play on some some pretty you know decent sized stages that I'll have this on, and there'll be some smaller areas I'll be playing in as well. So it'll be really interesting to see uh, how this does in both settings, right? Uh, and plus outdoors versus indoors, that sort of thing. So. Um, and we'll talk about like placement and that sort of thing. So we, we got a lot of experiences coming with this Evolve 50M here, guys. Okay, so um, do I amp model when I uh, favorite song I've written? You know, I, I really like the song 
called Masterpiece off my Masterpiece album, my latest album. That's that's probably one of my favorite songs uh, that I've that I've written. It's, it's Masterpiece is spelled Master than P E A C E like like Peacekeeper, right? But the Masterpiece album, the title track Masterpiece, I believe is track four. That's my favorite song ever written because it, it's a story. Um, I'm trying to think of another song. There's there's a song off my very first album that I like a lot called The Healing. And it's, it's that, that album's more of kind of like Satriani meets Metallica style. That's off Apocalyptic Dreams. Um, do I amp model when I play? So when I play live, guys, I'm using, and I think most of you have seen this on the videos, I, I'm using a Line 6 Pod Go. And I have, you know, I just plug my wireless into that, and I've got patches set up for my acoustic rhythm, acoustic lead, because I loop, you know, I use a looper, the Ditto X4. I've got videos on all this stuff, guys. Just punch it in and on my YouTube channel. You'll see them pop up and how to, how to loop and all that stuff. Uh, but I, um, I've got an acoustic rhythm, acoustic lead, and I've got patches for my electric. So I use that. The electric, I'm, I'm using, like, their Marshall amp sim in there. And it is for playing on top of acoustic rhythm. Again, I'll loop the rhythm on acoustic. I'll play something. Boom, I'll click it and that'll play because I'll loop it. The loop will record that. Uh, and then I'll, I'll switch the wireless, pull this out, plug in my wireless to my uh, to the telly, what I usually take to the light, these types of shows. And I'll switch the patch to an electric patch on the pod go and I'm soloing over that. And that seems to work really, really well. Um, playing live metal, which I hope to start doing again very, very soon, guys. I really hope to start. Uh, I want to put together a band, um, but I also would like to, I'd like to have some musicians play my music live. So with this new album that I'm working on, I'm planning on doing a few shows, um, and I'm, I'm hoping to reach out to uh, my friend Ed Aborn. I'm hoping he'll sit in with me and, and play a few shows with me and I just need a bass player maybe a rhythm guitar player too so I'm, hope, I'm hoping to do something like that but as far as using an amp versus amp model I haven't decided how that will go quite yet uh, Sonia what do I think about ovations I, I can't remember how they sounded when I played them it's been years probably decades but I, I didn't like the oval back because when you're sitting down, they kind of roll off. I'm like, wait, I can't, you know. I mean, playing live, I stand up anyway. But um, I, I honestly don't remember enough about the time of playing. Uh, Chris, have ever thought of doing any gigs out of state in Georgia, say in Georgia? Well, playing cover songs, no, I'm probably going to stick local because if I'm playing somebody else's music, um, I don't I don't see a venue paying me, you know, compensating me enough to drive to another state. Um, just to play cover songs, you know. Now, if if it were if I'm playing my own music, my own music, you're you're going to see Jason Stallworth. I'm playing live, but m you know my music. Okay, that's a different story. Yeah, I, you know, again, it has to make sense. You know what I mean? Uh, it has to make sense. But with the acoustic shows, um, I mean, I've driven. We've driven as far as Bradenton, which is about an hour from here, uh, and and of course. Play at sea, I play at SeaWorld sometimes in Orlando with traffic that's an hour and a half. It really should be an hour, but the interstate going there is just crazy. Uh, major upgrades on. Sean, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I pre appreciate the thoughts there, man. Thank you. Uh, Scott, have I ever thought about an AB switch so you don't have to move the wireless to the electric? I have thought about that, um, but I would still, you know... It would still be the same thing though, because you know, I'd still have to change out. Uh, I'd still have to change out guitars. Like right now, I'm using just one unit, right? I'm just using the Pod Go for both acoustic and electric. So I've got to switch this wireless piece from one to the other. You know, now what I'm considering doing is having a separate unit for acoustic. I'll continue using the Pod Go for my electric, but I may just plug the acoustic into this thing, right? Into the looper and then go into this and have a wireless for both and that way I can just pick up the other guitar and start playing um, so major upgrade which liar which wireless do I have so I the boss WL20L 
this thing right here has lasted me for a long, long time. So, uh, man, I've been using it forever, like three years now, and it's, it's never given me any problems. I just charge it after every show, and I've never had it run down. I, had, I played a five-hour gig, and actually there's other, there are other gigs like the State Fair. I was there and had this thing plugged in for over six hours, seven hours, because you play some, and then you, you're off some, play some, you're off some. And when I play at SeaWorld, that's, you know, that's five or six hours that I'm there total. And it's plugged in. Never, never had any issues with it. Uh, major upgrade. I actually don't have the PodGo wireless. No. Uh, when I bought the PodGo, um, I just got the regular PodGo. I didn't, I, I'd already had the wireless. So I already had this thing here. Um, I kind of wish I would have bought the wireless version because I, you know, I could have, I don't know, that, that might would have just saved me as a backup. Um, or I could just use that for the electric and have this wireless for acoustic and use something else, you know. But uh, I, I didn't get the one with the wireless in it. Uh, Scott, any issues? Humidity. Yeah, I mean, well, rarely am I in and out of air conditioning with the guitars. I'm either playing inside somewhere and we're, and we're there or I'm playing outdoors. So uh, my wife bought us a big fan for the stage. It's a stage fan. It's kind of made for, you know, stuff like this. I mean, I, that helps a little. I mean, it helps me stay a little bit because I, I feel some wind movement. So it's good for me. I don't know how much it helps the humidity factor with the guitars. So, um, I've never had any issues though with this particular this Takamini guitar when it comes to um, you know when it comes to humidity. The neck still still stays the same. This thing stays in tune like crazy, man. I rarely have to tune this thing up. I you know just a little bit before each show. I might have to tune it again if it's like super humid or if I'm playing a real long show. I might have to tweak it a little bit. But uh, my Martin, unfortunately. It goes out of tune quite a bit, so I, I think I just need to get it adjusted. Numi, congrats on the purchase. How does the Martin sound through it? Um, you know, you guys want to hang on for a second? I'll grab the Martin real quick. You guys mind? Let me grab this real quick. I'll, I'll be, I'll be right back, guys. Give me thirty seconds. Hey, there we go. Okay, the Martin. <laughs> so let's see how this thing sounds, guys. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about bringing this out. Um, first of all, let me see if this thing's in tune. Like I said, this thing it tends to it tends to go out of tune on me. Yeah, it's a little sharp now. I like the Martin. I mean, it sounds really nice. Alright, good enough. Um, let's take this out. Let's plug it into the Martin, guys. Here we go. Again, there's no effects on here at all. <laughs> Yeah, this, this guitar is so full, and that's what, it's just got a very, very nice full sound to it. I need to get the action lowered a little bit more. I can't play my leads. And it, 
you may not be able to tell, I'm not quite as accurate on my leads uh, with the fretting as the Takamini is. The Takamini just like, I can, I can actually shred on my Takamini. And here, I, I, I feel like that's a little sloppy. And I don't shred through the entire show, but I mean, I, you know, that's I'm kind of known for that now. When I when I loop a, a rhythm, and I'll play some acoustic lead over. But um, in any case, so yeah, I like switching back and forth. I, I bring both guitars to most shows that I go to just as a backup. Uh, that's a hard lesson I've learned over my uh, over my time. Of, um, of playing live shows. Always have a backup. And even if it's just an electric guitar, because I bring my Telecaster as well, and the one time my Takamini just crapped out, well, I didn't have another acoustic, but I had my Tele, so I, I played Tele and just sang through the rest of the show, man. Um, you know, that's what I did. Um, someone asked uh, for an acoustic version of one of my songs. Kind of hard to do for Masterpiece. I could probably work it out. This album that that I'm finishing up now, there there may be some acoustic versions of some of the songs on the album as well, uh, because I the way I've written some of the songs, I can tr I can easily translate that to acoustic, and that was kind of my goal, and that might be my goal going forward with with Jason Stallworth with, with my solo albums to even when I write rock and metal music, to be able to have an acoustic version of most of the songs that I write. I'm gonna have some instrumentals on there as well. You know, so that's kind of the goal because I want to be able to, you know, play more of my own stuff out there, you know. Yeah, just a nice full sound and it sounds really good through the through the evolve here. says it uh, sounds great bought the same exact model about a month ago still dialing it in sounds a bit tinny when you plug it in direct um, yeah now this is the Martin uh, this is the Martin Road series the GPC 13 E uh, I've never had any problems with with it not having that full bottom into it but again you know it my Takamini just plays a little bit better and so that's just a matter of just getting this set up again it, it, I'm going to actually going to replay Guitar Exchange tomorrow in Tampa to film so I'll be you know guys I film some content there about once a month they're, they're gracious enough to allow me to come into the store um, you know before they open and, and, and I know some of the guys that work there and all good friends with them and, and but I, you know, again it all goes back to giving value I pump out videos that are getting views and it are, it are bringing people to their store. They, they, may, they make quite a few guitar sales from my videos, which is great, because uh, it allows me to go in there and film content that I, I don't have access to all this stuff, you know, without going there. So it's, it's a really great win-win situation. Um, this guitar, though, sounds great through, <laughs> through the EV Evolve, man. Man, wow. A lot more bottom end than the Takamini, I think. Major upgrade, I'd love some pancakes. Yeah, I could do some of those as well. time ago.
So Sonia, hear a lot of Spanish style riffs. Do I play flamenco or have nylon guitars? I it wasn't my nylon guitar, but I had one many many years ago. But I, I do my style kind of shifts when I pick up the acoustic, and I'm to be honest with you, I never really tried to learn any particular style. Uh, just kind of what what I feel naturally, I guess you could say. The only guitar lesson I ever had was learning how to play classical, just learning the finger techniques. Uh, so your thumb for the first three, and then these three fingers for, and that's honestly all I know, but I, I learned to, you know. So that, that I learned a long time, and honestly, just that right there, uh, just that little technique there, and I don't always finger pick like that, normally I, I do another style and I'll show you that, but uh, that really enhanced my lead playing. This is probably two or three years after I started playing guitar. I went to this one instructor, again, the only formal lesson I ever had was, and he's like, well, let me show you this technique. Oh, cool. <laughs> normally though, if I'm, if I'm playing with a pick, which I do all the time, right? If I want to stop and finger pick, then I'll just do this. I'm playing with these two fingers here. And look where my pick is. I'll tuck my pick under my middle finger like that. So that's how I switch. switch I just uh, I'm picking like this and I'll quickly just tuck it under my middle finger and I just pray that I don't drop it <laughs> in which I rarely have done that uh, the only time I really drop my pick is like at a time where I'm just taking the pick out of the guitar strings and you know I've even had guitar picks fall through the cracks if, if I'm playing on a deck or something like that okay it's gone I've always got another pick on the table you know um, I love in my dreams man yes yeah, good tune love some Dawkin Dream Warriors, yeah, Dream Warriors from Nightmare on M Street Part 3. It was awesome, really cool. Um, Scott, I never tried gravity. I've, I've tried, I can't say I haven't tried gravity picks. I don't think that I have. I've tried so many picks, and I've had people even send me picks. Hey, you've got to try these. Um, but I, I always go back, and I'm not sponsored by Dunlop. I mean, they're just a common brand, but this is the Dunlop Max Grip, and it's a .88. And historically, uh, through most of my guitar years, I played through .60 millimeter picks, Dunlops. Um, but then over the years, I went up two notches. I think I went to 73, then to 88, and I played thicker picks. I don't like thicker picks though, but this, this, the, the 88s are perfect, and I like the Max grip. They've got the little grippies on both sides, and it's not overbearing. It's just enough to, you know, yeah, Max grip, major upgrade, yeah. Max grips are great. I love these things, man. Um, I need to reach out to them and see if they'll make a Jason Stallworth brand of these so I can just put my name on it because that would be cool to have. Because I, I love these picks. I won't. I really won't play with anything else. I've tried. It's it's my same feelings on the strings I use, which are Elixirs. I use the Elixir Nano Webs. I've tried many, many other strings, but most of the time I've tried other strings on both electric and acoustic. I take them right back off a day later and slap Elixirs back on them. So I just I'm like you know what Elixirs. Sometimes it's good to try new stuff, but sometimes once you um, once you find something that really works well for you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know. Yeah, I can see that tragic. You know, having having the thinner picks for electric and and eighty eights. Um, I just I I have often said the joke that I'm like Leonard Skinner. I'm a simple man. I just I use it for both acoustic and electric. That way I don't I never have to worry about separate picks, you know. Anytime I can simplify things and if it makes sense to simplify it, you know, and it works, I'll do that. So 
like a sweet pick on here. Yeah, that was messy. All right, so listen to this. Do the EV. So we got we got bottom end. Let's see. Let's compare real quick. Just us guys. The Martin and the Takamini through the electro voice. And you guys can hear this pretty well, can't you? I, mean, I know you guys can hear the guitar, but but if I unplug this thing, oh, I didn't expect that sound. Now you can tell the difference. That's not plugged in, right? Okay. So now. Just plug it back in. I'll turn it up just a little bit more here. Let's go 3 dB on this. Let's do this. We are going with the, and you're supposed to kill your signal before pulling it out like that. I'm just being lazy. All right. It's Takamini time, guys. Let's compare. Make sure the volume's adequate. Now there is probably a little, de the delay you guys are noticing is just the live part here. I know somebody mentioned the delay with the wireless. Um, actually there's there's really uh, like li in a live setting, but the live YouTube, you see me doing stuff and sometimes there's a little slight delay and I think that's just because of the streaming here. Um, oh, you're saying no noticeable delay from the wireless. Sorry. Okay, now, now I understand. I, I misread that. Yeah, I know. It sounds great. This sounds good. this system sounds good with no effects. I mean, of course, I want to be putting some reverb and and delay. Uh, but let's see. Um, this guitar, I've got a sound hole cover, which is kind of needed for this thing. Let me see if the notch filter works on this. Because this has a notch filter here. Um, So you're saying Takamini has better mids, it's got, you know, had better mid de definition. Yeah, the Martin, the Martin does, the Martin almost sounds like the Injustice for All album where they scoop the mids, right? I mean, I could EQ that, but um, it's got, a, the Martin has, uh, it's got more low end to me. Like when I pick it up, I can feel the difference. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys saw my video, my, my Takamini versus Martin acoustic video. It's out there. I think I put it out a couple of weeks ago. So check that out after you watch this or, when, or whenever you get time. And you'll, you'll hear me compare it on stage uh, with instrumental, with vocals, and also with the electric guitar over the acoustic rhythm. So I, I made a really comprehensive comparison of the two. Um, this guitar feeds back a little bit. But again, I've got a sound hole cover for that. Um, Major Upgrade said, I don't know if you would like playing the full size jumbo. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man, this is, uh, this is a lot lighter. The Martin is a lot lighter than, uh, than the Takamini, for sure. Not a lot, but, um, this guitar, though, it's, it's pretty comfortable. Standing up is, is really comfortable. Uh, 
but this guitar just plays a lot easier. It's, if I can get the Martin setup to play as easy as this does. And I think I can do that. I think that's doable. That should be, that should be very doable. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I see what you're saying about the, about the Martin maybe giving more space for the vocals. That's why, go, go watch that video, guys, uh, Martin versus Takamini on my channel. See what you think about that, because in the middle of the video, I do the vocals. Uh, you'll hear me singing some songs with it, some of my 80s tunes, uh, and you'll get to hear the difference between, you know, between the two. But, the, yeah, the Martin, yeah, and that's, yeah, Keith Johnson, I, I see what you're saying as well. The Martin, when you plug the Martin in, it's like, okay, I know exactly what that is, you know. <laughs> it's, you just it's very pronounced so all right guys any more questions out there before uh, before we wrap things up yeah the, lo the low end is desired on acoustics I, I freely admit that I've actually got now I've got an EQ on this thing We can add, but there's nothing like the na and that buzzing was just my EQ kind of. Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing like the natural low end from a guitar as opposed to EQing it, right? It's just. There's a mid contour button. This the Takamini has so many EQ settings on here. It's crazy, man. Uh, if I press the mid contour, let's see how that sounds. I think we might have just nailed it with the EQ here, guys. Keith says the the Takamini and uh, yeah much much more similar now so I get the comparison there Keith yeah it's um I just I wish my Martin played as well as this one does again I'm gonna try to get it set up and hopefully I can get it you know get it set up to the specs that I like but yeah check out the Martin versus Takamini video they have out there guys guys I am gonna wrap things up um, I want to say thank you all so much uh, for being on here for hanging out with me appreciate this it was it's always cool to just hang out and chat with you guys uh, folks at Electro Voice thank you again um, for for this awesome system here this is the Evolve 50M it's quite amazing just sitting right here I mean I can't wait to play it live expect quite a bit of content coming for this thing especially a full rundown of my very first gig with it which is gonna be at Kill and Curly next Friday night so Probably another another two weeks. I'll have a video out there uh, for you guys, and I'll have I'll have several more to come with the system here. So, guys, thank you once again. I really appreciate all you guys uh, hanging out. Appreciate the support here on YouTube. As always, guys, keep it metal and keep playing music. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of the week, and I will see you soon. <laughs>